just singing about the intergalactic and all of its glories and how privileged we are to be living in a wonderful world of peace and prosperity where no one is ever hungry or saddened by anything in our very own intergalactic. Okay, is anybody able to ch type into the chat for our intergalactic? Because um, I want to know what problems you guys can do. I know which ones are the hard ones, but I don't know what you're actually looking at right now or if you're ready to uh, go at the moment. So uh, uh, let me pull some stuff up out of the old bread basket. Oh, what am I looking for? I'm looking for a bunch of stuff. Rah. A few different <clears throat> oh, thinking materials. Is anybody up from the Galactic? Intergalactic, where are you now? Intergalactic, intergalactic. That's not the actual intergalactic national anthem, by the way. My AP class from last year knows of the Intergalactic National Anthem, so it's pretty amazing. Really, I think people just want to see the pith ball. I think people just want to see number 11. Here are all the galactic problems. Just waiting there. So much galactic, so much galactic time. Look more intergalactic, it's beautiful. This is the fun problem. Actually, this beneath it's the fun problem, but the one above it is just as fun. Maybe we'll wait a few minutes and then see who uh, wants to see that problem work to its completion there's currently nobody in the channel which which is sad oh, intergalactic. we just sit here and sing about the intergalactic for for dozens of dozens of seconds or minutes or whatever I said seven o'clock and it is clearly seven oh two. So So for me and the one other person in this channel we're on time. Get on time intergalactically speaking. There's a lot of cool stuff. Oh, whoa, whoa. Did I say intergalactic? And then the color just turned to galaxy? What? It's like it knew. It's like it knew of the glories of the intergalactic. Or did it? We're definitely using that color, like, the whole time, by the way. We've switched over to the galactic theme. I didn't even know those colors existed. See, that's just gradient colors. This is, someone was looking out for me. Someone knew what I was doing today. Okay, let's just do this. Um, 
I've wasted five minutes of my time. That's dozens of dollars worth of worth of things I could have been doing, and uh, I hold uh, no qualms about questions and queries that you did not have the opportunity to ask because you were not on time for the galactic founding. Okay, cool. Anyway, okay, like I showed before, we're going to be looking at number 11. Um, not do number 12. Number 12, you can figure out um, if you're clever and know a little bit of stuff um, regarding the world of uh, series. Anyways, number 11, uh, classic physics problem, right? We have two pith balls that are equally charged, double positive, double negative, whatever you want it to be. Um, and they are hung basically so that their electrostatic repulsion is uh, equal to the tension force kind of bringing them back in. They want to just like lay straight down, but the electrostatic repulsion is pushing them away slightly. Um, and they only move away by some small angle, small angle theta, okay? So that's something important to be aware of. Um, and they're just suspended by a, uh, a rope or a tiny bit of string with negligible mass of length L, okay? So that's the problem we're gonna look at um, and win right here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw a Kind of like a far away picture and then i'm going to zoom this picture in okay so for our far away picture here um let's just imagine that this is you know tacked up top and then you've got the two pith balls just like that oh, i can't even use purple here there's too much going on there's our angle theta on each side there's the pith ball there's the pith ball okay um this is from far out, and whenever it's far, far out, this is this looks basically like they're just hanging straight almost, okay? Like, I, if I drew it even, like, more far out, you know, it's like, this line's like that, and then this line's like that. They're barely even pushing each other apart. We don't have something that, you know, looks more in the case like this. And this is, you know, the classic way of drawing this to make it easier to look at. You have some large length. L with the pith ball at the end and then symmetrically you have a length L with an equal pith ball on the end okay so this is the zoomed in look to that that's not what we're running here um we're really something more akin to this up here in terms of uh, what it looks like but to do the math let's zoom in Okay, um, I'm going to move out of intergalactic colors because they don't actually help me. The only thing that can help me is sound, logic, and reasoning. Uh, what color was this? Well, it's got the red. And then that means this one gets to be a lovely blue. Okay. Um, okay, so if we're looking at this, uh, what we can have here is uh, let's just define a few different things. We already know the string is length L, we already know these are each um, charged with some charge, and we already know that this is some angle theta, okay? Let's, because of that, call this entire distance separating the charges, let's call that whole thing X, which would make half of this region X over two, okay? If you do that, the problem is basically done. I know that sounds crazy, but it really basically is. Um, if we take one of the, the pith balls here for a second, and let's just look at the forces acting on one of the pith balls. So there's my galactic pith ball. Few forces we have acting on it. Uh, the pith ball, because it exists, well, that is a non-straight line if I ever drew one. It has some weight acting on it, equal to mg. It has acting this way some tension pulling it along the distance of the rope, 
and pushing it away from the other charge is some electrostatic force. I'm just going to call it Fe. Okay. Now, if we're looking at this picture right here, we can actually basically just use this entire picture to really solve out this problem. Um, if I kind of look carefully, I have this angle theta here, and this line T that I drew works like this, coming up this way. And then this vertical line here is an opposite interior angle, or I think that's what it's called in geometry. Okay, you can double check me on that. But those angles have to be the same. So, let us state that this is angle theta. Yay! Okay, now that that's angle theta, what we can do is we can say, well, the vertical component going up here, if this is our hypotenuse, this is the adjacent side, that's hypotenuse, and going over, because these are vectors, they're forces, this is the opposite side. That means this side here going up, this going up is uh, um, the T cosine component of theta. And this here going across, this is the T sine component of theta. Okay. You might be looking at that like, why in the world did he just get those quantities? Well, the reason I did that is because this pith ball isn't moving anywhere. It's not accelerating. It's not drifting up and down. It's not moving left and right. It's not swinging back and forth. It's just sitting there, minding its own intergalactic business. And because of that, um, the sum of the forces and the sum of the torques, but in this case there are no torques, um, the sum of the forces acting here are zero, and there is zero in both directions. So the sum of the forces in the y direction are zero, and the sum of the forces in the x direction are zero. <gasps> so that's kind of helpful. Um, I'm just going to write this, and we'll see where you go with it. I'm going to write the x forces first, okay? So this is in our x direction. I have that, and I'm going to uh, forego positive or negative conventions. I'm going to simply set them equal to each other. So I could say like t sine of, I could pull this, I could say like t sine of theta uh, minus Fe equals zero. But all I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this over here and call them equal, okay? That's what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to say that Fe equals T sine of theta. And then what I can do is I can say Fe, that's an electrostatic Coulomb's law. I know that quantity. It's simply K Q Q over, and then thinking back, the entire length here was X. So I'm just going to call that x squared. Yay! In the y direction, I have weight, which is equal to mg equaling t cosine of theta. If you're looking at this, there is a way to solve uh, you can solve this there's some math here if you're like oh I don't remember um, well the rebels are gonna get you then because they would have done a substitution for T they could have worked that out solving for T in the Y direction plugging it into the X direction and playing a little work around they could have done that um, or if you want to be more clever than the rebels, you could divide both of these equations by themselves. And if you were to divide both of these equations, you'd see that your t's cancel, 
and you would get something that looks analogous to, I guess I'll use uh, green here, you'd have kqq over x squared mg equaling sine over cosine, don't you mean tangent, Mr. Botzer? You bet I do. Okay, that's not too crazy. From here, tangent of theta, I wonder what the tangent of theta could be. You can figure the tangent of theta out. See, this is theta. Do you know an opposite? Do you know an opposite side? Right here. Do you know an adjacent side? Right here. You do. You do. You might have to do a little Pythagorean theorem there but you know it. So you know tangent of theta. Uh, strictly speaking, if this side right here would be a Pythagorean theorem, but remember, we started all of this off talking about this. So the difference between this line going straight and this line at the edge is minimum, so you could actually just get away with saying that is approximately L2, give or take. It's a little physics move you can pull there, but for small angles, it's true. Hey, now you know tangent of theta. Pull some algebra. Let's see if you get this answer. X equals whoosh, 2K Q Q L over MG all to the third. That's intergalactic in to the maximum. Okay. That's it. That's how you do that. It's nothing too crazy. You just set forces equal to each other. Set up one vector component here. We've done that a billion times now. Substituted, solved, whatever. And just went back to your picture. That's all it was. Smallest one on the homework. Probably the easiest problem on the homework, if you know what you're doing. Okay. Well, there are no other questions. Are there any other questions? Chat, any questions for me and the one person who may or may not be here? Um, nothing. Nada. Anybody? You're all probably just going to watch this after the fact, aren't you? <gasps> probably. Okay. That's fine, though. I'm glad you got the intel somewhere uh, to help you out. Okay. Well, adios, everybody. Intergalactic away. Praise be to Lord Reztob. And long may he reign. Goodbye.